Hello, welcome to the functional group update for people operations today, February 6th, 2018. Thank you everyone for joining us today, whether what time of day it is for you. It's great that you're here. Let me advance. So again, what we're talking about is what we usually talk about when we do these updates. I'm not going to read the slides. I will give you a moment to look at them and, uh, and then I will open up to questions actually as we go and I will add some commentary. So accomplishments, Scott's on the call. This one I will read. Welcome Scott Kubik. He's our recruiting director and he's already making amazing progress here at GitLab. He was definitely um, thrown right into all the work that needed to get done and I love to see all the work that he's doing. Uh, in January, we made 26 new hires. Great news of this is that we are making progress on the lower writ indexes. But what I also want to encourage everyone is to have more referrals. So uh, one thing about making new hires and having great teammates at GitLab now, it means that we can get more because if you're great, you probably know some other great people. So please do click on these links. Please do participate in the referrals. There are referral bonus programs. So not only is it great for the company and great for you to be able to work with great colleagues, but you can also make some money doing it. So uh please please have referrals and please note that if it's a uh candidate from an underrepresented minority your bonus is greater and if it's a candidate from a low rent index region then your uh referral bonus is a bit larger as well so compensation calculator most of you have experienced the change and have been communicated to there is still some iteration going on with this. Actually, I don't want to minimize that. We're still doing a lot of work on it, but it's also been a huge accomplishment. And I want to thank Brittany a lot for this, as well as all the hiring managers who gave us input and um, the team that gave us input. And I'd also like to, although he's not here anymore, thank Ernst who also helped us as well a lot on getting this over the line. And then we will continue to do some great work on it. Summit location is confirmed. For those of you on the Summit channel, this is no surprise, but we will be going to Cape Town, Africa. We feel good about the solutions they have in place for their water crisis, but we're also hoping the absolute best for them that they can get that figured out and, uh, and be a nice, healthy, thriving city that we saw when we visited last month. It was really a great location and I hope that everyone here has a great time. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to remind everyone is the, the team call format is new, so don't hold back on feedback. And there's a link here for that feedback as well. There you, a heads up, you will also be receiving an acknowledgement form for the code of conduct. This is really around making sure that the things that you really need to know that you do, that you have a chance to review it, you understand it, and that you're able to acknowledge that you have seen it and read it and can understand it. These are the type of things that uh, are in the handbook, are very important, like many of the things in the handbook, but deviation from these could be a little bit more problematic for yourself and for GitLab. And so we wanted to make sure that it's called out separately to make sure that you really have gotten good awareness with that. I know it's unusual, I know it's new, uh, but hopefully when you read through it, nothing is shocking or surprising and you all feel comfortable signing the acknowledgement form that will be in Bamboo HR. I want to welcome all the, the German um, Git Labbers we had to status of employee. Uh, and I also want to thank all the managers for attending the harassment prevention training that we launched. I have to be honest, I think that Abby did a great job in finding this training. I've been doing harassment prevention training at companies for the last 20 years, and I've never gotten such a positive response from a training as we got from Will Interactive, which is what she rolled out. And uh, we are going to look for something for all employees, because while I think it's especially critical that our managers and leaders know uh, how to pro provide for a safe and respectful workplace, I also think that every single one of us is part of that. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, and I want us all to be part of the solution. A manager training next one will be um, not on February 1st. We need to update outside. It will actually be on February 15th. And the, um, oh, we held it. Sorry, this is correct. It was on February 1st. We'll be holding a feedback on February um, 
15th, we decided to move that up and all employees will be invited to that. All, all teammates will be invited to that. And we hope that it's helpful in helping us all feel more comfortable giving each other feedback. Headspace, uh, if you get that feedback survey, please give us um, feedback on it. And the rest of it we've basically covered and you've had a chance to read. So with that, let's open up to questions. I see we do have a question here. What percentage of hires do not have English as their native language? It's an excellent question, I, but I don't know the answer. So I, we do have data on the percentage of employees who are outside the US or outside the UK, but I never want to make assumptions about where people live or where they were born and what their first language was. So uh, anyone from the team know if we have captured that somewhere where someone actually tells us if it's their first language or not? Okay, so um, if we, if we, deem it as being important to know, we can consider doing that. Do you, thoughts on that? Is it, what's, what would be the value of knowing that um, in terms of, what, is that something we would do differently if we knew that? Seeger? Uh, Barbie, I'm wondering if that could not, I'm just walking away from the kids, sorry. I'm wondering if that could not be an issue with diversity and, and being biased, et cetera, and, and wanting English as a global language. So I'm wondering if we do capture it, um, if it couldn't have some sort of negative impact. Uh, it's just, there's certain things um, I think is great to capture as a survey to say, hey, how many languages can GitLab speak? But I'm unsure if, um, if we should be asking that and then someone might feel we can discriminate against not having English as a first language. Yeah, I don't really care what order that you learned English in. <laughs> um, I think um, the important thing is that we can communicate with each other. However, I do think it's interesting to know what language capabilities we all have, because there could be times where we want to call on someone to say, oh, great, Barbie, you speak German. Can you help us with this? Uh, that I think can be valuable. So um, I do think that um, we do capture what languages people speak in Bamboo HR, and you can go and update your languages in there. But um, I don't know that we know which one was your first language that you spoke. Any so, other yeah, part of the reason I actually asked this question is that the, the rent index um, for hiring, there was a focus on it today and as well as yesterday, and it was called efficient hiring. And it sounds really uh, like terms a uh, surgeon would use right before you go into like, uh, this is a really bad analogy. I'm sorry. It sounds really clinical. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I'm tr yeah, I'm I'm not really sure if that's the the message uh, people ops is trying to get across, or or yeah, maybe what's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I think that I do want efficient hiring. So I mean, I think efficiency is a is a good thing. Uh, I think that um, if the term is one that feels too clinical, we can look at that. I know that aside from what is here, I definitely want to, uh, I would say, jazz up the handbook a bit and, and make it more engaging and maybe use less legalistic terms. Um, but uh, I think here at, at GitLab, we do value efficiency. And I don't think we consider it a bad term. It's actually, you know, part of our values. So uh, if that's something that we need to look at, we can. But I do think it's also defined well in our values about what we mean by that. And I think that what we mean by that is, is a pretty positive thing. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, can I help elaborate on the Headspace trial? I've used Headspace in the past and was considering using it again. We launched a trial for Headspace to just a few number of people. We raised an issue for this and people who were interested let us know. And then we gave them the trial link to it. I don't know if Chloe wants to comment more on that, if I summarize that correctly. 
but uh and then they've been in the trial for a while i'll be honest i'm in the trial i haven't actually tried it yet so uh i'm i'm not a great person to talk about how it's working but if someone on the call is they can speak up i will try to go use it uh i think it would be good for me i'm thinking i'm the exact type of person who needs it uh but uh that is really what happened it was the issue went through the trial and then we'll be evaluating whether or not we roll it out yeah the trial actually ends next week um and it's a very small group of people only about 25 to 30 um that was what was recommended by headspace um and so far we've have had had pretty good usage of those number of people using it. So um, today we're just gonna send out the feedback survey and see how they're using it, seeing if it's being effective in their lives and go forward from there. Nadia tried it and loved it. <laughs> Scott said it's great for bedtime before kids. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's also great um, during the day, Bobby, to take like 10 minutes. It's really short. I think um, the one, the once or twice that I did it was about three or four minutes. <clears throat> and I mentioned yesterday in the team call that I struggled to relax. That was a great way in my day to just find time to relax and breathe. Um, I also really liked the tone of it. It wasn't a, you get irritating voices in meditation apps. This didn't have an irritating voice. This had a really nice monotone um global type voice so i enjoyed it excellent okay so we'll get back to everybody on what direction we're going with that i'm i and i'm pretty proud of myself i finally figured out how to actually present and still see comments i, I just figured that one out <laughs> took me long enough Chloe, can you post the link to what we posted about Headspace? Any requests for the link to be in there? There's some fun comments going around about Sid hearing voices in his head. Oh, the, 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 the person that does Headspace, the voice you hear is a very distinctive voice. And sometimes, like when I was skiing this weekend, you kind of hear, like you're thinking about something, and you kind of translate it in that voice. It's such a distinguished voice. Like, no, slowly go down the piste or something like that. It's, uh, I have a hard time reproducing the voice, but anyone who's done the headspace will recognize that voice immediately. That's awesome. I tend to hear Yoda in my head. <laughs> okay. Anything else? We're good. All right. I want to thank everyone again for all the great work that you are all doing here at GitLab. And I want to, I, I'm going to have to say this every time. I want to make sure that we're still focused on being very inclusive and we're focused on diversity and we're respectful of all of our, our uh, teammates here. And I also want to put another push in for referrals. Uh, it's great to, great to get those where we can all be scouts and recruiters at this company. You don't have to have the title. Okay, thank you.